I'm Mr. Angels. I'm here to do the daily reading for Thursday, December 8th. So again, December 8th is the 342nd day of the year, which is a 9, 342. Um, but 9 plus the 8 would take us back to 8 again. And if we want to add the 3 for December, it's 11. So that's pretty awesome. And there are 23 days left remaining in the year. So there's one of our fives. We're still seeing the same numbers uh, this week as we did last. 5, 8, 9. Speaking of 9, beginning with the energy of the moon... I'm going to use the Angel Tarot, important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. This, I'm on, I'm, the moon is a Pisces. I'm wondering if this has anything to do with Pisces, but I'm thinking actually that's next week with the Pisces. Okay, so anyway, let's go right into the events so that we can get to those. In the year 1863, or 9-9, or 9, Abraham Lincoln issues the Amnesty Proclamation and a plan for reconstruction of the South. 1941, the U.S. and Britain declare war on Japan. The U.S. enters World War II, officially. 1941, President Roosevelt delivers the Day of Infamy speech to the U.S. Congress, a day after bombing Pearl Harbor. 1965, or 111, Pope Paul VI signs the Second Vatican Council. 1966 or 67 or 13 or 4 or 11, 11. U.S. and USSR sign a treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons in outer space. Well, how nice of them, right? Am I right? I mean, you know, like as if we, either of us owns the, the outer space. This is the arrogance of man. It's really unreal. It's outrageous. Anyway, 2004, the Cusco Declaration is signed in Cusco, Peru, establishing the South American Community of Nations. Did you know Dwight Eisenhower gives the Adams for Peace speech at the UN in New York on this day, December 8th, in the year 1953, or 9, and then which makes it 8 <laughs> when you add the 8 to it, which makes it 11 when you add the 3 for December. Famous birthdays, Mary Stewart, Eli Whitney, Diego Rivera, Jim Morrison, Sinead O'Connor, and Nicki Minaj. Famous weddings in the year 1872 or 99 or 9. Religious leader Brigham Young, who was 71 or 8, wed his 55th wife, Hannah Tatfield, in Salt Lake City, Utah. So, of course, uh, Brigham Young being uh, who was said to have read the invisible words from God. No one else could see them but him. He started the Mormon church. In the year 1950, NBA player Bob Cousy, who was master number 22, wed his college sweetheart, Missy Ritterbush. 1953 or 9, Prime Minister of Canada, John Diefenbaker, 58 or 13 or 4 or 11, 11, weds his second wife, Olive Palmer, who was 51 or 6 at the Park Road Baptist Church in Toronto, Canada. 2007 or 9, Happy Days actor and legendary bachelor Scott Baio, 46, was his longtime girlfriend Renee Sloan at the luxury high-rise in Los Angeles. 2007, Backstreet Boys member Howie Durow, 34, 7, was longtime girlfriend Leigh Boniello at St. James Cathedral in Orlando, California. I'm sorry, Florida. I don't know where California came from. Oh, never looking up. The one above it was Los Angeles, California. In any case, moving on. Famous divorces, 2010. Heart rock singer Nancy Wilson, 56, 11. Divorces, almost famous, and Elizabethtown director Cameron Crowe, 53, 8. So maybe they had some sort of St. Germain and Lady Porter situation going on with their 8 and their 11. Uh, they divorced, however, due to irreconcilable differences after 24 or six equals love and equality, years of marriage. Famous deaths, Albert Kahn, Robert Henry Lawrence Jr., and John Lennon. Man, uh, John Lennon was British, a musician and a Beatle, a founding member of the rock and roll group, The Beatles, and who, uh, with Paul McCartney, formed a hugely successful and influential song, uh, songwriting partnership as well. He went on to develop a solo career with hits like Imagine before being murdered in New York City in 1980. 
or nine. Um, he was born on October 9th in the year 1940. He was a Libra from Liverpool, United Kingdom. He died on December 8th in the year 1980. At the age of 40, he was murdered. Robert Henry Lawrence Jr. was American, an astronaut. He had been in the Air Force, and he was the first African-American astronaut. He was born on October 2nd in the year 1935, a Libra from Chicago, Illinois. He died on December 8th in 1967. At the age of only 32, he was killed during training in a plane crash of an F-104 Starfighter. Albert Kahn was also American. He was the architect of Detroit the foremost American industrial architect of his day, and is sometimes called the architect of Detroit. He was born on March 21st in the year 1869. He was an Aries from Ronin, Kingdom of Prussia. He died on December 8th in the year 1942 at the age of 73. Going up to the birthdays, Nicki Minaj is 33 years old, so she will be 34. She is a Trinidadian-born American. Her profession is rapper and singer. and She's famous for super bass and starships, according to this. She was born on December 8th in the year 1982, currently 33 years old, a Sagittarius from St. James, Port of Spain, Trinidad, and Tobago. Sinead O'Connor is currently 49 years old, so she'll be 50 on this day. She's Irish, a singer and songwriter. She rose to fame in the late 1980s with her debut album, The Lion and the Cobra. She's archived in the worldwide as a worldwide, worldwide success in 1990 sorry, with a new arrangement of Prince's song, Nothing Compares to You. She did a great job. She was born on December 8th in the year 1966. She is 49 years old, a Sagittarius from Glenagary, Ireland, and she's thankfully still with us. So we're moving on. Jim Morrison, who is no longer, was an American rocker, the lead singer of the Los Angeles rock band The Doors. He was born on December 8th in the year 1943, a Sagittarius from Melbourne, Florida, USA. He died on July 3rd in the year 1971 at the age of only 27, nine. Um, supposedly due to a heroin overdose. I have my feelings about that, and I'm sure many people do, you know, we conspiracy theorists. Anyway, um, the doors and, and he make me think now of the wand. <laughs> that didn't come out right. Sagittarius, the fire signs, uh, you know, his song, Come On Baby, or the doors song, Come On Baby, Like My Fire. Um, you know that it would be untrue. You know that I would be a liar. If I was to tell you that we couldn't get much higher, you know, that, that, that's talking about the ascension. And he's saying, like, we have to try to do this. We have to try to continue to go higher. And what do we have to lose? That's basically what the song is about. Anyway, Diego Rivera was Mexican, a painter. Diego Rivera was the leading painter in the Mexican muralist movement. His major works include Man, Controller of the Universe, Detroit Industry, and In El Arsenal. Rivera's art reflected his strong political views. He became a member of the Mexican Communist Party till his expulsion in 1929 or 111. Rivera traveled to Russia to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the Russian Revolution and hosted Leon Trotsky in Mexico. Rivera's murals, done in the fresco in public places for the people and reflect their historic and social concerns. Diego was married twice to fellow Mexican painter Frida Kahlo, and their relationship was famously tempestuous. Diego himself was a major influence on Carlos' own artistic development. Eli Whitney was American. He was the inventor of the cotton gin, best known for inventing the cotton gin, which is one of the key inventions of the Industrial Revolution and shaped the economy of the antebellum South. I, w I don't know why they didn't say of the slave trade. Let's, let me let me give them a benefit of the doubt and go further. Let's see. His invention strengthened the economic foundation. Oh yeah, of slavery in the United States. Okay, because I was about to go off. Um, they were just making it sound like it was just a, something nifty that came along and and helped uh, <laughs> to revolutionize everything. Yeah, specifically what did it revolutionize? In any case, he was born on December eighth in the year seventeen sixty five or eight eleven. Um. 
under the star sign Sagittarius in Westboro, Massachusetts, USA. He died on January 8th in the year 1825 at the age of 59 of prostate cancer. Lastly, Mary Stewart was Scottish. She was the Queen of Scotland. Queen Regnant of Scotland from December 14th, 1542 to July 24th, 1567 and Queen Consort of France from July 10th, 1559 to December 5th, 1560. She ascended to the throne when her father, King James V, died despite being only six days old. She was born on December 8th in the year 1542, a Sagittarius from Linlithgow, Scotland. She died on February 18th in the year 1587 at the age of 44 of decapitation. That was the last one. Let's get to the cards. Wait till you see what I have for advice and what, what the beginning energy is. So again, for the uh, regular spread, we're starting with the moon, Archangel Haniel. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. And I want to mention that Archangel Haniel is Archangel Daniel, and Archangel Daniel is the Archangel of love and marriage. Okay, just remember I said that. Opening to the Ten of Water, a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. Ten of water now at the bottom. Of course, the, the moon was also a water sign, just to mention that. Now, coming to the night of fire. Who is the knight in shining armor of the tarot? And perhaps the one who wants to light your fire and show you how much higher you can get. Passionate, adventurous, self-assured, and restless. A sudden event that needs immediate attention. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. Knight of Fire back, opening now to the King of Water, who is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. It's going to lead to trustworthy and heartfelt advice and also charity work, which is love, if you ask me. King of Water. Okay, is this showing up to be... Now, just as I'm saying how awesome the day is going to be, look what I just opened to, the three of air. I'm rebuking this personally. Um, no great sadness or time to heal from me. Um, I moved past this already. It's the need to forgive yourself and others, though. So let's make this go away. Let's see. It's still here. You got to go, three of air. Sorry. It doesn't want to. It really does not want to. Okay, it's gone. Yes. The Eight of Fire. Events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over. Many things are happening at once. Uh-oh. I'm going to quit now. <laughs> the Five of Earth. Fear surrounding money. The wisdom to self... Ex well, let's hope it's this one. The wisdom to accept help from others. Uncertain self-employment. I should have quit at the King of Water. When he showed up more than once. Let's quit with the Eight of Wands. That's commu communication coming back and forth. Um, and like the card suggests, things happening at a fast speed. Coming to the energy of the nine of earth. Enjoying life's little luxury. Spending quiet time alone. Successful self-employment. This nine of earth may mean that there's some more time alone. Um, or maybe it's just in preparation. right? Maybe it's to get you know pretty or... Go to the barber, get a haircut, whatever men do <laughs> um, to treat themselves in preparation for coming together. Because that um, Jim Morrison and the Light My Fire really had me thinking that the, the wand was going to show up here. And then the Knight of Wands already did. So let me see. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Spirit says forget it. But romantic dinner, so all is not lost. And buy shoes again. We're going to have so many pairs of shoes. All right, let's ask for our cards.
all hope is not lost. The overall energy is the king of fire, who is motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. The masculine is the queen of water. So maybe still in his surrender, uh, taking on this feminine energy. Maybe. Queen of water can be either. Uh, and in either case, she is or he is tenderhearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition and care for yourself and others. Wow. Surrounding him is the knight of water, who is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals. Remember that this came up too. The need to balance emotions, an invitation to a social event. So, so far, two things I gave you to remember is that Archangel Daniel is the Archangel of love and marriage. And now this says falling in love or wedding proposals. In his subconscious is a decision that he has to make. For me, swords, the two of swords, two of air is about a decision between two people. Doesn't necessarily mean two potential mates, but two people nonetheless. So it could be like that friend that was showing up that was talking crap. Uh, the friend and your mate. Who do I believe? Your parent and your mate. Um, you know, if the parent doesn't like them, well, I think that they're, he's this, I think she's that, whatever. Um, or, you know, it can be another potential mate, but it, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be. In any case, it's in his subconscious. So he's thinking about it and being an air, being air, um, cards an air card, air energy swords. It's logical. Um, anyway, the feminine is this dawn five of earth again. Fears surrounding money. The wisdom to accept help from others. Uncertain self-employment. And surrounding her is the energy of the ten of air. So this showed up in her subconscious. It's moving up. Right? It's moving out of her subconscious and further up into her surrounding energy. This um, feeling of betrayal. The end of a difficult situation, however, because it's a ten. Embrace the change and expect things to get better now. In her subconscious... The four of fire, contentment, peace, and abundance, a happy home life, the successful completion of a project. And this card can be about commitment and about marriage. It's all about higher institutions. Remember that it's about marriage. <laughs> That's three things I gave you to remember now. Crowning the eight of fire is back, that very high um, communication card. And things moving at a fast pace going on between us. Events are moving at a fast pace. Yes, delays are over. Many things are happening at once. At the root is the six of air. Moving into a positive direction. Things are looking up. It's the end of a difficult situation. We may even be taking a trip. And at the heart of the matter is the queen of air. Who is independent, experienced, realistic, and witty. Objective decision-making. Clearing away all that no longer serves you. Seeing the humor in a situation. Maybe the queen of air is who has to make a decision. Um, and, you know, she's over here in the masculine. Taking on this energy that's watery and emotional. And um, a little soft. And not, you know, getting into her heart and her emotions more so than her mind, that she, which she usually is, maybe. Maybe somebody has to make a decision of, about her, um, whether or not to move in this forward direction with her or not. In either case, her difficulties are over, right? All of ours are. Um, that's done. She's worked her way through this, and now she's closer to this. Peace, contentment, things happening at a fast pace. This feeling of being just soft and loving and patient. Um, but also ready to make a move. Romantic and enthusiastic. Contemplative thinking. Should I? Do I pop the question maybe? These are all things. Now, why do I want you to remember all that stuff? Because the cards that I decided to get the advice from are the Mary Queen of Angels deck. Because it's also her day. Um, today is the feast day of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th. Um, we're going to begin with the energy of marriage from her deck. Opening to children. 
as she mentioned in her own reading, my heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive change for them and for me. The marriage um, card says, I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Children are back. Opening to watched over. I allow myself to feel safe and to enjoy my life knowing that heaven is watching over my loved ones and me. So that's spirit telling us to go ahead and go out to the romantic dinner. Call a babysitter. Let them watch your kids. They're fine. They're going to be watched over while you enjoy your life. Opening to tenderness. I am both gentle and powerful. Now that's back. Six. Yes. Landing on the energy of feminine. And I'm thinking, taking this to mean that we all need to go this route. So the masculine needs to get into his feminine. And um, feminine, we need to get into our feminine right now. I allow my feminine nature to shine brightly as a valuable part of my identity. I want to put one here over this five of earth and here over this 10 of air and here over this two of air and here for vice and here for vice. <laughs> the overall energy is inner child. I nurture the child within me. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I can't even speak right now. I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self care. I'm cracking up because she like totally warned us about that. We'd be having children soon. Um, of course, there's other meanings for inner child, but again, if you saw these, the uh, December 8th, the Immaculate Conception slash Bodhi Day reading, you know what this means. So this is the other reason I told you to um, be mindful of all that energy of marriage and all that talk of marriage and wedding. Because with this deck, I'm also beginning with the energy of wedding. This situation involves marriage. Opening to finances and career. And we don't even have any pentacles on this table that I recall. Oh, only the one where the feminine is worried about money. Wedding is back. Opening to let go of control issues that would probably be attributed most to us since, again, we have the card of being worried about money. And the masculine seems to be um, raring to go it's, um, as far as emotions are concerned and being willing to follow them and follow one's heart. Wedding is back. I'll go one more. Opening to new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And now that is back. So same thing. I'm going to shuffle a little bit. Put one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. So some clarification and some advice. The overall energy from here is stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. And I hadn't prepared my Ascended Masters deck, but it's only fair because, again, it's also Bodhi Day. So Buddha may want to say something. But thus far, I'm opening to detach from drama, Pallas Athena. So she's reminding us to cut off what no longer serves us and who no longer serves us. Get rid of this person who keeps causing us the Ten of um, Swords, the Three of Swords, the Seven of Swords. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Detach from drama. Walk away from it. Say, girl, bye. Bye. And that's it. 
We don't have time anymore. We got all this wonderful stuff going on. Look at this spread and how many times marriage and wedding was mentioned. Isn't this what you've been wanting for all this time? The, you know, these commitments. We got to listen to the goddess Pallas Athena. That's opposite energy healing with Merlin. So it's another reason why we're being called to detach and to let go of these people, places, and things. Because they're unhealthy to us. They're toxic to us. Okay, now to health and healing with Hilarion. And now he's back. And lastly, crystals with Epona. So all of these messages about healing our energy. Crystals is back. The overall energy is spiritual law of attraction. And I spoke about this because on the original December 8th video, um, or in the December, original December 8th video is probably more, more correct as far as grammar is concerned. Um, the topic of the flow, quote unquote, flow of prosperity from this very deck came up. And so in the weekly reading for this week, I was guided by spirit, by God to discuss the spiritual law of attraction and the flow of prosperity with you all with regard to donations. Um, this is now our overall energy. So I just wanted to bring it back full circle again. It began with a card that was pulled for a reading for this very date. And it's coming back up as a topic on this date again. And now the overall energy is energy healing with Merlin. Okay, let's see what we got to clarify this five of earth for the feminine where she is feeling a lack. Exactly of what is she feeling a lack? Patience. <laughs> and I spoke about this in the, in the general weekly or the love reading. One of them, I pulled the card, the five of earth. I think it was the love reading actually. And I said that in the love reading, this can have more to do with becoming impatient. Um, so yes, Mother Mary is co-signing that, that that's what it's about here. And uh, the feminine needs to slow her roll because it's happening and trust in divine timing. Don't begin to think that maybe the connection isn't there. It is. There's a strong magnetic attraction here. So strong that he's thinking about marriage or you know at least real commitment with you. So choose peace. <laughs> Don't start and there won't be none. Atop this 10 of air and the people that we thought cared about us, but they instead stabbed us in the back and betrayed us. Mother Mary is saying about those people and about those relationships, um, of which you need to let go. Perhaps you need to cut them away completely. Maybe, um, like the queen of swords is very good at doing. She's saying, be strong. I pull myself up and do what needs to be done. You know, she's a rider. That's it. She's going to handle her business. And it's all for the sake of true love. And for Mother Mary, true love, um, you know, is love with a capital L, her son. It's like the Prince song, uh, love come quick, love come, you know, in a hurry. There are thieves in the temple tonight. These are these, again, these ten of swords people, these seven of um, swords people that are attacking not only true love in the lowercase but true love her child and she's telling us to be strong and to defend because this is a romance of a lifetime and to use crystals if we need to in order to again help us to cut people away from ourselves help us to clear our energy help us to heal from the hurt and the feeling of betrayal help us to let all that go 
and forgive ourselves for, for ever becoming involved in it for our responsibility because we we have a responsibility in every situation even when we feel that someone has you know done something to us maybe in, in some aspect we feel victimized we're responsible in some way for every single thing that goes on in our lives um you know like good bad or indifferent so to let go of that <laughs> crystals uh, okay the two of air and the masculine's decision has to do with boundaries so again this might be a friend or family member who is getting in the way of his decision or trying to make his decision for him so he needs to um put his foot down as it has been indicative he's you know going to do has done you know has been doing as of late he might need to do it again you know maybe they're getting out of line again and he's saying, I'm clear and honest uh, with others about my expectations. So he's like, I expect you to fall back, at, you know, out of my life, out of my decisions that I have to make. This is this is my job. I got to handle this. I got to choose. Do I want to, you know, move on with the Queen of Swords or not? Do I want to move in a positive direction with the Queen of Swords or not? Or do I want to uh, be the Queen of Swords and cut off something that doesn't serve me or not? That's up to me. He's also being called upon to express his love. So if that's the question, if that's the decision, um, Spirit is saying the answer is yes, express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. And this putting down of the foot, um, setting boundaries with people, not allowing them to, you know, again, uh, lead your life for you or, um, you know, determine in which way that life goes is positive change for you. It's a good thing. So masculine, further to that, your advice for the day from Mother Mary is open your heart and allow yourself to feel the full range of emotions that this queen of water and knight of water have to offer, for example, especially all the forms of love. Passion is what the romance angels say. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. So yeah, just be the queen of water. Be the knight of water is basically your homework. And guess who did show up? Buddha, he says, meditate. <laughs> Maybe meditate on heart chakra or something. You know, listen to the healing sounds with regard to heart chakra or to uh, clearing away things that are that negative um, negative emotions and negative cords of attachment that don't serve us and or fear. You might want to listen to that too. And feminine, <laughs> your advice is twin flame. This is what the ascended masters have to say to you. So yeah, again, cut it out. Um, stop becoming impatient. It's happening. They've already reconfirmed. Choose peace because this is what it's about at the end of the day. From the romance angels. That may require you to heal family issues. Again, this person may be somebody that was close to you that betrayed you. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents and whomever else um, would be involved in something like that, however. And lastly, from Mother Mary, giving and receiving. Similar to a card that the masculine got. Um, he got... I lost it. But he had something like with this sort of about giving and receiving. I feel like I just talked about it with him a second ago. In any case, um, we're getting giving and receiving from Mother Mary. I balance both being generous and receptive because both are equally important. I hope that you all enjoyed the reading of the day. Namaste, angels.